Okay, this is your Paint Shop Pro 7 application, and this is a graphic editing tool and creation tool. And the first thing that we need to look at here is just if we look at our main menu, we have File, Edit, View, and your help. And we have some other uh, options that will come up here in a second. But your basic stuff is to create a new image file or to open one. <clears throat> you can browse and look at other files. And we have some workspace where we can load um, some templates that we might have created. And we can import if we have a scanner set up or your digital camera. Here I can acquire, if I've got a, the scanner set up, I can acquire image data from there. And then we'll get to some other um, preferences where we can set up how our uh, interface looks and all of that. One of the first things we want to do is in order to create a new image, we'll click, we'll click on either File, New, or here on the, the standard toolbar, we have New. And we want to create an image. And let's just start with an image that is 400 pixels wide by 300 pixels high. And our resolution is going to be 72. Now the background color for this first little exercise, we're going to leave as white. Okay, and we'll leave that as white and I'll show you why. And then later we'll work with transparent backgrounds. All right, so I'll click new. And notice now everything starts to come alive. Now our toolbar over here started to all of a sudden get all of these different um, options available to me. And as well as a whole bunch of new options on this standard toolbar. And look at our main menu. Our main menu all of a sudden just came alive. Notice over here we have our color bar, and if we look at different um, toolbars, we can view our different toolbars, and here we can see that we have our standard toolbar up, we have our tool palette over here, we have our color palette checked, and then we have our status bar which is down on the bottom. And these are the four most important ones. The fifth one is going to be our tool options palette, but we can toggle that on and off from the standard toolbar. So we'll get to do that also. So I'll close this out. And you can do a lot of the standard things. And let's just look at, and we'll get to each one of these tools in different lessons, but let's just talk about standard things that we can do with this. One is I can take a paintbrush, I can click on a color and move this mouse around, and I can draw. I can draw text, I can draw squiggly lines, anything I want. And I can always undo. Every time I click undo, it undoes the last thing I have. Now I forget what the maximum number of undos are, but it's up in the 15 or 16 range. Okay, something like that. Now that next tool option or tool under our toolbars is this one right here called the tool options box. And this is what we call <coughs> a context sensitive type of dialog box. And the reason is, is when I <coughs> select a tool over here, notice that the context of this tool options box changes. It changes depending on what I'm using. So for example, the paintbrush, the options for the paintbrush, I'll have my shape of the paintbrush, round, the size of my paintbrush, hardness, make it a little softer, density, stepping and opacity. So if we'll stick with what I have here and a different color. Now if I don't like I don't want to pick a color here, I can click on this color chip. It'll open up the color uh, picker dialog box here. It'll allow me to choose from all my basic colors or create a color based on some numbers that I might know, some values for red, green, and blue. All right, or if I know the hue, saturation, and lightness, or even if I was working on a website and I had some type of HTML code and I could choose a color. So I can choose colors many different ways. If I choose a color and I want to use it over and over again, I can add that to my custom palette so I can choose it later. Click OK, and now I can create some designs or whatever I want to do. Now shapes in this program are a little difficult. And here's how I want you guys to create your shapes. We could do some shapes presets down here, um, but due to some of the network configurations here in the lab, um, sometimes the shapes don't always work. So what we're going to do is we would create our own shapes, 
and the first thing we want to learn how to do is to select a shape type for example an ellipse or a square or a rectangle draw the rectangle then choose our fill bucket which is our paint bucket here to fill that now I can notice that I have the little marching ants around this and this is your one of your first shortcuts that you have to learn in this program and that's to deselect items and if you look under the selections menu you have select none which is deselect and it's control D so you can either do the, the long way by selecting selections then select none and it will deselect or if I undid that I could use my keyboard combination control D and it would deselect all right I'm going to undo this and get right to the chase of what we're going to do and that is to create a multi-layered graphic and so now in addition to my tool options I need to pull up one more tool palette and this would be called my layers palette and that's symbolized by this icon up here on the standard toolbar if I select that you'll notice that I have a layer palette and I only have one layer right here and I can't even adjust its opacity so the first thing that I do is I create a new layer and I'll call this well I'll just call it layer one or maybe I call this rectangle and now that I'm on layer one I'm going to draw my rectangle again draw that rectangle and then I want to paint it choose a color and then I can deselect it because it's all set and I can use what's called the mover tool over here the mover tool and now I can move that layer around anywhere I want all right so I can move that around now if I want to create another layer we'll call this one circle and I'll choose my my uh, selection tool here this time we'll create a circle now remember I'm on this layer I'm not on the rectangle layer so it doesn't matter where I draw it I'm drawing a circle and let's get our fill bucket and let's color that circle in all right and I can deselect it and if I want to I can move it around with my mover tool anywhere I want like that now notice here the circle and the rectangle the circle is on a layer the rectangle is on a layer and of course we haven't done anything with our background well our rectangle and our circle can change positions so for example if I wanted the rectangle to be on top of the circle I'm just going to click and drag that up above it or click the rectangle and drag it below the circle that's how we create many different layers I can also adjust the opacity of any layer so for example if I want a little bit of the layer behind to show through the circle I can do that okay let's try another one here this is a little more difficult let's try a new layer and let's call this triangle now if we go to our selections we drop this down well I don't see a triangle oh there's a triangle okay or we can draw our own let's do, so let's let's say we didn't have this triangle option here I could select the triangle and, and do this there's our shape but let's say we wanted to create one by ourselves so I'm going to undo that I could use my selection tool or I'm sorry my lasso tool here this is called freehand selection I could I could use this freehand selection and I'm going to go to I'm going to go to um, uh, point to point and I'm going to click drag click drag click and then go back and then click and then double click Oops. there we go and now I have finished my triangle and I can do the same thing I can get my fill bucket 
choose a color and then I can deselect it because I can always use my mover tool since I'm on that layer and I can put this anywhere I want so now I have a multi-layered graphic right there and then again I can take my opacity sliders here and change that okay we could do stuff like that if I wanted to now I've just created a basic multi-layered graphic now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create one more layer and we're going to use the text tool the text tool is very neat and we're going to call this we'll call this layer um, title one and I'm going to select my text tool and the first thing that I'm going to do is make sure everything's set there my text tool and I'm going to click on the image itself and I'm going to make sure that two important settings are selected one is that it does not say vector or selection it says floating and the next is that the anti-alias box is checked these two are very important so remember that floating is checked and anti-alias is checked now the stroke of a uh, text is the outside of it if you notice here the stroke is this green if you see the preview of the world of the word excuse me and the fill color is the inside so we have stroke and fill you can choose no stroke so you just have a solid color or you could choose a stroke color and no fill and you would have something like that so I'm going to choose a fill color and I can choose any color okay. choose this we're at red right here and then for stroke I'm going to tell it no stroke and then I'm going to type in my words or select a font this one will work fine type in my text and it's floating and it's anti-aliased if I preview it right there I can say well maybe I'll make it just a little bit bigger we'll give it 26 maybe even one more maybe two more let's go to 36 see if that fits that looks good I'm gonna click OK I can then move it into position alright and then I can deselect it and deselecting will promote that to this layer right there alright now let's try one more thing and let's just create some like graphic effects I'm going to create another layer here and I'll create another layer and I'll call this uh, title 2 title 2 and it's going to be a text layer so I'm going to go in here and this one will give it some fancy stuff and we'll give it a, a fill color uh, let's say a light color and we'll give it a stroke color of something darker and we'll change the font and we'll just call this you know we'll give it here some text and let's change that font to highlight the word and we'll select from a font. Now what's nice is you can choose fonts here and you can key down them and sort of look at their sample and their preview. And if you want to find something that looks really neat, okay, if you wanted something like that, you could choose that. All right? Or you can choose from all these fonts. You can get a script one. There are even, there's something like that, Algerian. Click OK. Let's make that a little bit, eh, that's good, 36. Click OK. Now, before I deselect this, I want to do something special with it. I want to rotate it. So I'm going to go up to Image and Rotate. Notice that it's a floating selection right now. It's not, it hasn't been promoted up to its layer. And I'm going to rotate, and I'm going to choose left, 90 degrees rotate that right there and I'm going to do one more thing 
to it before I deselect it. This is just a neat little thing. I know I'm covering an awful lot in this first lesson, but if you learn just these things that I'm showing you, it'll prepare you to do almost any task that you need to in graphics design. And that is to apply an effect on it. We're going to apply an effect. It's going to be a 3D effect, and it's going to be called Drop Shadow. Drop Shadow. Notice the color of my Drop Shadow is going to be black. And I can use a vertical and horizontal offset. And this one, I'm, it's going to be four pixels to the right and four pixels down. If I went to negative numbers, this would be those number of pixels to the left and those number of pixels up. So we have our vertical offset and our horizontal offset. Now blurring, if I do no blur, you'll see it appears as a hard, let's see here, let's push that over a little bit more so you can see it. You'll see that it appears just as the text. All right. The more you blur it, the more it looks like a fuzzy shadow, something like that. All right. And opacity is just the opacity of the shadow itself. And of course, you can change the color. It depends on what effect you're looking for. So we'll do that effect. We will then deselect it, hitting our by selecting none or Control D. It promotes that to that. And then, of course, we can move that title down below some of our layers to give it an effect. Maybe give our triangle a little more transparency, less opacity. Same thing with our circle. And let's take our rectangle like that. And how about we take our title, that's our title one, and move it up to the top and put that behind the triangle and we could even take our title even now that we've deselected it we could still apply an effect of drop shadow and maybe we'll blur this one out a lot more and even give it a color sort of gives it a glow okay we can even take our triangle and move it down and now the next thing that we would do is save our file. I'm going to save this, and this is very important. I'm going to save this as a PSP file. It's PaintShop Pro MM101 graphic. And this PSP file is going to save all of my layer information. It will not be a file that you can use anywhere. You could not import this into your PowerPoint presentation. You could not put this file on the web. In order to do that, we need to save it as something else. Okay? We could either export it as a JPEG, a GIF file, or a PNG file, which we'll talk about more today. And, or we could save as one of those multiple file types. For example, we can now choose by, by selecting, let's do this again, by selecting File, Save As, or Save Copy As, either one will work. We can now choose to save it as a JPEG, a Windows BMP file, or a GIF file. <coughs> JPEG is your best bet, and there are options for your JPEG. The lower you compress it, the higher the quality will be, the larger the file size. The higher the compression, you're going to get a lower quality image, but you're going to get a very small file size, maybe appropriate for a web, for a web page. We'll stick with down here about a compression factor of 15. That will give us a compromise between good quality and a small file size. Let's click OK, and we'll save that. And what it will do is it's going to merge all of these layers down into one file. And if we open that up, we can now open that up. Our JPEG. And you'll notice that it looks the same. Our quality hasn't degraded that much. It's a little different. But notice that now it's just one layer as opposed to this file, our our working file, we'll call it, our PaintShop profile, it has maintained all of the layers.